So, Governor, let's talk a little bit about cybersecurity issues. Obviously, you know, we have seen some some hacks on banks and problems in the banking sector. Uh, I mean, what is the industry and what is SWIFT doing in order to make banking safe? With our users, we launched the customer security uh, program about a year ago uh, to effectively beef up the, the defenses across the value chain. I think we all realize that the cyber threat is, is not getting less. It, it, it will continue to evolve. And by the way, we can look outside the banking sector and see some high profile examples over the past year as well. Uh, banks is where the money is. The good news is that historically they've had a mindset of thinking about security. Uh, yeah. In that sense, I think they're better prepared than uh, most sectors. At the same time, their defenses probably also have to be better than, than other sectors. We are working with our, uh, our customers on that, on that journey. We, uh, we mandated a number of controls around the endpoint security that they have to uh, comply with and, and attest against their counterparties uh, that they comply uh, with it. But that's not all. Uh, we're also imposing or, or have launched a big information sharing uh, program with a platform where they share indications of compromise, modus operandi, etc. And information sharing is crucial. Uh, the, the bad guys operate globally. The defense has to be uh, global as well. Which is something banks have been always been a bit nervous about, haven't they? I mean, sharing information. Yeah. Because uh, they're competitors. Yeah, and, and there are lots of platforms that do it nationally. Uh, I think what we bring uniquely is to do it uh, globally, internationally. Uh, really share these on an anonymous basis, uh, these, these, uh, these data. Um, then there are a number of controls that the banks put in on the incoming side, screening payments as they uh, come in. We are launching a tool for banks on the sending side whereby you can, you can ask us to block payments if they're outside a number of parameters that you set, uh, value, time of day and, and, and a number of, of yeah. things that, uh, that will evolve. That's the, the payment control uh, service. And when's that coming in? Uh, that will come out uh, uh, next year. So okay. uh, that's now being developed and we'll launch it uh, next year and, and go live with it. Okay. And um, you, you mentioned that you think the banking industry is, is doing better than other industries. Well, historically, they've had the advantage, at least, of a mindset that yeah. people are out there to, to that they're fraudsters uh, out there. Um, and I think when it comes to IT security, they, they I mean, they've always been more IT conscious than most sectors because it's IT intensive. And I think from the start, they have been cyber uh, conscious. Uh, but yes, they uh, they have still a way to go, and it's. It's not even. Some banks are state of the art. Other banks are, are just getting started uh, on the journey. We are looking at a global community of, of 10,000 banks that are on the network. So you, yeah, you get it in very different shapes and forms. And you mentioned that banks are where the money is. But actually, I mean, one of the scariest things is, is that you've got uh, cyber hackers out there who just sort of do it for almost political reasons. That, uh, and you've got governments who are now doing it for warfare reasons, espionage reasons. It's always been a very, uh, a very uh, interesting field. And, and the, the historical distinctions of crooks versus spies versus soldiers uh, may, may be vague. Sometimes they cooperate together on jobs. So yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a fascinating, if somewhat scary field. All right, now what can technology do to help? I mean, are there some fintechs out there again with, with some magic uh, solutions? There are, and, and artificial intelligence uh, ca can help in, in uh, pattern recognition. There are many technologies in terms of, of hardening code. We are in embedding many of these technologies in our software that we make available uh, to customers. Uh, obfuscation, detection, uh, many more capabilities to phone home if something funny happens. And, and, and we, are, we are now, we've put these controls into practice and they work. Um, I would not discard good old antivirus uh, software. Uh, it's been around for a while. It's grown much more sophisticated in terms of not just specific code snippets, but they look for patterns as well. And we do see cases where the antivirus trips and, and yep, there is something, uh, something going on. So, so that's another interesting area. I mean, are you able uh, in your industry position to see how much is being picked up and how much, how much are we stopping? We don't, I mean, it would be false to claim that we have the full picture, but we do get a good sense, especially since, uh, since the events at Bangladesh Bank a year and a half ago. People come forward now with these things, they share it uh, with us, uh, we help them analyze uh, what happened. So we have some visibility around what's, at least what's close to the SWIFT uh, infrastructure of, of what's happening. And yeah, we can, we can see the reflection of the real world. Uh, I think we're fortunate to have not seen a repeat of, of the Bangladesh uh, Bank, but they keep trying, absolutely. But uh, this is not over. <laughs> okay, we well, wish you success. Thank you.